I am in Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada, and we're speaking by Skype to my new friend, who I actually talked on the phone just a couple days ago, Adam Forgione. And I'd like to introduce this by saying that I saw some clips of Adam's teaching style and was hugely impressed because I am now very much in the digital world. I do DSLR uh, full time and there's a lot I don't know. And I'm also in audio. I don't know if you can see, but I am in a recording studio right now. See that sound? I'm going to ask you about that later. Yeah, I'm a musician and one of the things that resonated with me was, of course, your amazing audio uh, technology, knowing the hardware and limiters and things like that. And I also know very much, uh, I play you know, violin and piano and guitar and everything like that. I read music. So when you were talking about cadence and 3-4 versus 6-8 time and finding you know, the big note and, and all of that other stuff, as a video editor, I don't really time to music that much because I just didn't think about it. I mean, I'm not actually there yet. And when I saw your thing, I thought, this is really going to really make it. Not only will the music influence my cuts, not only will the cut frames, like you were showing, influence my cuts, it's going to really expand my style. And I'm thankful for that, that I learned that. Now, if someone were to come up to me and say, man, I love how you do that. I don't know what you do, but your videos have this thing. It just, I don't know, something. I would say this. Well, you know, it, it's tied into the music. And if you compare the music and all of this I learned from Adam Forgione. If you compare the music and the climax and the timing and, and, and put that together, you've got yourself an invisible layer of, of video. And, and the thing that I can relate that to would be maybe Looney Tunes. I don't know how many of you are old enough to watch uh, Bugs Bunny and, and all that other stuff. But they had all of that stuff orchestrated. When the little cat is walking on the wall, they go... Ding, 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 ding. And then they go, wah, wah, you know, and all that. That was all orchestrated. And that, that was the beauty of the presentation of storytelling, was just making the whole thing an experience in the editing of where the director makes the eyes go and all of that. And I thought you were brilliant on that. So when this thing came up and I'm watching, and you can tell who's in the lead. If there was ever any question as to who was the originator of these concepts of teaching, there was no doubt about it, because here's you. You're saying, okay, this is the big payoff, and, and listen to this, and blah. Okay, you're gesturing. It sounds like it's coming from a place of excitement and passion, and I can tell that you're seeing that the audience is connecting with it and, and going higher. Then I saw Rob Adams' clip, and he looked like he was a little bit kind of cowering underneath the words that were coming out of his mouth. You know, he'd say like, yeah, I'm a kind of a, you know, I'm, I'm not a dissolved kind of guy. That kind of thing. It was, it was completely different. I know one of your concerns is that, and when I spoke to you on the phone, the, the both of you are speaking at WPPI, and I know one of your concerns was that people might perceive you as being the one who copies Rob Adams. Now, that's a valid concern, and I just, before I, I let you... Um, comment on that. I did want to say that we just spoke and you said you took a couple years off to focus on your business. You were hugely in the spotlight and you decided to work very hard because you are so busy as a working videographer. And during that time, you've been a little bit quiet, but during the time that you were very, very busy on the public arena, um, Rob Adams was one of your students, took your class, bought your DVD. And, um, and so for the record, I think I should say, and we should assert that, let's put this to bed, you are the originator of those concepts, right? Uh, I'm, I'm the person who did what I did. Uh, you know, well, first off, I think you bought the DVD. I, I, I don't know if I had a DVD or a download. I, you know, I, I hadn't even looked that far. He was at my, my workshop. I remember him at the workshop. Um, so, I mean, that's where all the information is, the workshop itself. Um, and I, 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 I remember him clearly. I mean, we're, we know each other now. We, we refer clients to each other, or we did, um, you know, when we're not booked. So we know each other that well. We admired each other's work. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I just know this. I know I, I take pride in what I do with teaching. 
I work really hard at trying to make complex situations simple. I enjoy coming up with cool methods of teaching, of showing people things and simplifying them. And people have told me many times that they enjoy that about me. So it makes me feel like I, I have something to offer. I want to keep doing that. And, and I enjoy watching people smile when I say something and it makes sense to the class. So I love that teaching part of it. Um, Let me stop you there it, for a second. I mean, I mean look, did, I, did he steal it? I mean, it, it appears to me he did. Do I know if he knew the knowledge before he took the class? I have no idea. He said he's a musician. He definitely is a smart guy. He's a talented guy. Maybe he knew most of what he, I taught him, or you know what I taught. Maybe he knew nothing. I don't know, honestly. But I do know that he took my class. He began to teach a lot of the same things I was teaching, and then he also teach them very close to exactly the way I teach them. And it's bad enough when a student starts to teach a lot of the same things that the teacher taught him, um, you know, or a class that he was in as a student and now he's instructing and teaching the same concepts. That in itself is kind of, I would never do that. That's, I think that's unethical. I would be embarrassed if I did that because I know I would get caught. But to take it a further step and demonstrate how these things are done with a lot of the same ways, uh, you know, it just goes too far, you know. I, look, it was obvious to me that it was way too far. There was way too many consistencies. And, um, you know, I, I did this for one reason. I wanted him to stop. I wanted him to stop immediately at what he was doing. And I didn't want to see it on creative law. I didn't want to see it anywhere. And... I didn't trust that he would stop. If I called him up personally and said, Rob, please stop. And even if he said, Dan, you know what, I'm, I, I, I'm sorry, you're right. I, I totally screwed up. I promise I won't do it again. At that point, I don't even, I didn't trust him anymore. I didn't even want to call him because I, there was no point. He could say whatever he wanted to say and I, I didn't believe him. Because I, I watched the video and I watched his eyes look at the camera. I just didn't believe him anymore. So I'll never know. If he would have stopped, I'll never know if that was the best way to handle it. But I just handled it the way I did. I mean, if somebody does that to me again, I'm going to do the same thing. So as as they yeah. should, as people it, should, yeah. Now, I, you know, in, in in the end, I did it for one reason. I did it to stop him from doing what he was doing. The obvious things that we all know bothered me, and I would have hoped that he would have began teaching other ways other things, other ways, or whatever, you know, just differently. That's, that's all I was hoping for. So let me ask you, um, I think that you are being gracious on the possibilities of the similarities. Let me just, I want you to tell me what your gut reaction was uh, to the following. So yeah, I do this thing called Walla. How'd you feel about that? Well, I thought that was, a, that was obviously, it appeared to be a direct... I mean, he took my audio class in Jersey. That's what I do. I do it almost every time. Um, I don't know. I just, uh, it was so obvious. Right. I mean, Wally Walla, I did not invent. It's been around forever, right. you know? But I always thought it was a cool thing to get them to do it so they can really understand how cool it is to get a bunch of people to say it at the same time. And I make a joke. I always make a joke at it, going, "Hey, now we could have recorded that. Now we got our own walla walla." You know, isn't that funny? And everybody laughs. And it's good. You know, look, we got gimmicks. We're, we're instructors. I'm, I like to be funny. I'm a wise guy. My friends know this about me. So you know, when I see people smile and laugh when I do a bit, you know, it's cool. I like doing that. You know, and it, it was obviously it looked like a complete lift. You know, mm -hmm. I assumed it to be a complete lift. That's why I put it in the video. Yeah, or throwing the SM58 mic. Obviously, same thing. Same thing. So, what? Here's my point on that. Um, the The United States Legislature has defined trademark infringement as the likelihood of confusion as to the originator. And I won a really large trademark infringement suit, a jury trial in federal court over things exactly like this. And when you can't tell who was the originator of the content. And I'm not saying that, that you originated the dropping of a microphone. 
What I'm saying is, is if there's a likelihood of confusion that Rob might have grabbed that from Adam, or Adam might have grabbed that from Rob, that's when you have basically a, a, a problem. You, you absolutely do have a problem. How that would be defined legally, that it's the basic concept of the confusion of who's the originator. When you stand in front of a number of smaller, larger, maybe you're at Days in in Schenectady, New York, and you've drawn, drawn 16 people, and you have to stand there for eight hours and do the program, but one of the things that you get is you get to see the reactions on people's faces when you present complex topics and they're not getting it. And you wait until the coffee break and they come up and say, I just quite don't get how you time the video cuts or why don't you do, why do you do quick uh, cuts rather than, than dissolve? So tell me again. The more they ask you those questions, the more you become part of the audience and then the more you bring in your personality, your sense of humor, your timing. I mean, you and I know we could go up to the Today Show and try to do the monologue, tell the exact same material, and it would fall flat. It's just that little tiny pause that you know the audience is now ready for me to drop the hammer. What All of those things that went into the hours of a person's presentation style, that's a skill. That's the same skill as if you're shooting a wedding, if you're shooting a video. You have your experience, you have your input, your education, your knowledge, and you present that for money. When you do get paid, you get paid. And so, and, and I know from what I've seen of you as an instructor, is you just want people to get it. You want people to, to just kind of, oh, now I got it and I can use it. And to me, if I were to see somebody take exactly all of my yearning to, to connect with a student and just grab that and use it, and what would kill me the most is people say, you know what, Rob, you are a brilliant, creative, funny instructor. I love your style. That would just kill me. Well, well that's why I read on, on Creative Live's reviews. Um, you know, it hurt to read the reviews. Now, I don't know if they were referring to my tricks or his own tricks or whatever, but I don't know. I'll never know. You know, but it, it, um, look, I mean, there's two types of people in this world. There's the people that understand morals and ethics, and there are people that are trying to look the other way to figure out a reason to argue about it. Everyone that has common sense understands that that video is as much proof as anyone needs to know that something wrong was done. I mean, I'm not going to waste time trying to explain it anymore. Right. One of the common comebacks is, well, he, you know, he edited this 12-minute video, and anybody could have did that. I mean, his thing was three days long. You know, 12 minutes, there's nothing. Here's the point. First off, I could have made it a lot longer. We're on line. Who's got time to watch longer than 12 minutes? I mean, 12 minutes is long. The other thing, too, is, you know, it doesn't matter. He could have talked for a year. I would have put that 12 minutes up. It's still long. You know, so that's what hurt me. Um, you know, I didn't edit it in a way so it, it comes across wrong. Um, you know, I didn't edit it maliciously. If anybody wants to know how it really happened, they can buy both of our workshops, I guess, and find out. Or, you know, like I said when I was kind of mad a few days ago, bring us both up on stage. I mean, obviously, if anybody, if Rob wanted to do that, I would absolutely do it. I think right now, think the point is the damage has been done what I wanted to happen was for him to stop it stopped I knew he was going to feel something from it it obviously went a lot bigger than I thought it would go I just wanted the video industry to know um, that I was mad at this and I wanted it to stop but honestly you know this whole thing could have been solved with one one simple thing and that is the golden rule the golden rule is do unto others as you would have done to yourself he would never have wanted somebody to do that to him. So he shouldn't have done it to me. And, and then likewise to me. I would never want to do that to somebody, and I would never want that done to me. So, I mean, this is basic common sense. If anybody doesn't get that, it's, it's I can't help them. It's well, there are, well let's, let's actually address that for a second. There are a lot of people who really don't get that. Reading the zillions of comments in SLR Lounge and, and Sal Sankata's uh, blog and everything like that, I will point out there was one guy who said he'd been to both of your workshops, and he said that uh, Rob. 
Uh, he was in one of the comments. Uh, I think he had a Latin American name. He, he, if you scroll through, you'll see it. But he said he had attended both of them, and he said it was virtually identical. You'd have to read the words, but he, he pretty much gave his I mean, you know, maybe, I mean, that's a good way to go. Maybe try to find people. If you're not, like, I'm done proving what I have to prove. But if, you know, maybe there's a bunch of people that have taken both of our things, I mean, let them talk. Let them read their comments. I mean, if you don't want to take them, there's going to be people that, no matter what you say to them, they're going to be convinced it's one answer or the other. But I, hold on one second. I'm sorry. Sure. Guys, can you uh, ch change it to another room? I don't mind you being intense, but... <laughs> Sorry, edit. <laughs> so, um... Well, the gist of the comments, though, is that um, what was a little disturbing was that people were mad at you for even bringing up such things. It's like, and, and the consensus would be something like, uh, of the two groups that I see, the one group would say, I don't see what the big deal is. Everybody has learned from somebody. Are we supposed to cite every single thing that we've learned for every every uh, thing that we say? And and how do you feel about that? I have my feelings, but I want to hear yours. Um, can can you repeat the last part of that? Yeah, I, everybody is going to say that uh, we've all learned something from everybody. So why must we feel? that we have to give credit whenever we say anything. All right. You know, teaching the same thing as somebody is one thing. And, and, and again, you know, there shouldn't be, there should be a concern if there's two people teaching exactly the same things, of course. Um, but teaching it the same way is a whole different animal. Everyone has a style, whether they realize it or not. And if there are two, two people teaching the same things in the same way, there's a problem there. There's a, there's a problem. And then when you find out that one of them was at the other one's workshop, you know, that's, that's a moral issue. It always goes back to morals. Be good. Do the right thing. It's, it's really as simple as that. As far as the other thing goes, um, I'm missing my point. You said something there that I wanted to address. Why shouldn't we credit everybody for uh, everything that we've learned? Yeah. So, listen. I, I credited Ray Roman with something I did. And he commented, by the way. And, you know, I know Ray very well. We're friends. I love Ray. And he I've learned so much from Ray. And he's a talented guy. Really talented. Um, he, you know, he it was a cool trick, you know? And you know what? Somebody else probably figured it out without hearing Ray. Right. And that's cool, too. But I learned it from Ray. And I'm proud to... You know, tell little snip, tid, tidbits of, check this out, look what I learned from right. I love doing that. And I wasn't stupid enough to say, hey, do this. And look, it's a public thing. My workshop's going to eventually be, I, I know somebody's going to eventually see, well, it would be stupid to, to not credit somebody. Sure. But my point is this. If I spent my, if I did 12 parts of my workshop and said, oh, and another thing Ray taught me was this, and Ray taught me this, and Ray taught me this, and Ray taught me that, one day they're going to say, why am I taking your workshop? Why don't I just take Ray's workshop? So, you know, you, if you want to do the credit thing, go. And go ahead. But the public will speak. Right. They're going to be like, hey, wait a minute. What am I, what am I even here for? Right. You know, so, it, it, again, it becomes a ridiculous conversation. It's just, it's so obvious that something bad was done. Well, and, the, here, here's the way that I see it. If it's were to say, you know what, there's a meadow out that window, I would like you to both to paint it. So when they say that, you know, there's, everybody talks about like JPEG versus RAW or whatever, okay? Well, that's fine. So we have something out there that we're going to describe. How you paint your meadow and how someone else paints the meadow, that's completely what I call presentation style. That is an original work. That is intellectual property. That is your creative work. That's the way that I see it. And so if someone were to watch you paint that meadow and then paint it the exact same way and then go give workshops on painting meadows just like this, then that is, in effect, taking. And I think the uh, one, one of the other questions I want to fit in before we wrap is, had you not said anything, how would you have been harmed financially? Oh, I, I've definitely been harmed financially. There's no doubt about it. Um, my, my, my material is still being sold today, and I'm not making that money. Um, and I'm, I'm not a vindictive person to say, that's it, I'm going to go, look, I'm not suing him, 
I told him I'm not suing him. Um, I I know what I wanted. I wanted it to stop, and, and I got what I wanted. That's all I wanted out of this. But the 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 thing is this. First off, this whole and I hope Gary, I hope you put this in. Oh. The whole issue is. It's all, it's coming to a head. It's it's closing in. I feel bad for what happened to him, but I also do not regret what I did and how I did it. I did it because I didn't believe I would get the truth, and I had no way of monitoring if he would stop. The thing is, right now he's dealing with it because he didn't follow the golden rule, which is do unto others as you do to yourself. And I put that up in front of the public, well, not the public, but the private uh, Facebook forum of industry peers. And I wanted them to decide for themselves, am I crazy? Am I going too far? And had I been gone to, you know, if, if I was wrong, and if I was just being a baby about this, this would not have gone viral. You know, there's a reason why it went viral. So I think the majority of the, the industry saw what was going on, understood. And I, I just want to want everyone to move on. I, I think one important thing though is we all should stop and think about this for a second and try to learn a lesson. And that lesson is have some respect for the educators in the industry and the amount of time that goes into preparing these things and the amount of time they spend away from their families mm -hmm. yeah. and the amount of money they lose sitting at a keynote instead of trying to sell a wedding or edit a wedding or whatever whatever they do to make money. There's a lot of time invested in this. I invested years into trying to figure out the best way to formulate my short forms. And to see someone just give it away. That was rough. It's really tough to see. It's really tough to see. That was see. rough. That was really rough, yeah. And, and um, but, 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 but the, the thing is though, it's done. You know, I'm not here to wake Rob over the coals. Um, he, he, you know, he, it happened, and we're all dealing with it, and what can we take away from this? And I, I hope that this is something the industry will remember so that this happens a lot less than it, than it does now. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, that's what I hope now out of this whole thing. I think what will happen, and you've made a really good point about people don't blame Creative Live, and I really like how passionately you said that. Because that's something I really want to, yeah. I'll be pissed, you know what, if, if I catch anybody, I'll say this publicly, put this in the world, if I catch anybody blaming these people for what happened, I will, <laughs> I will say bad things back to you online. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I'm, really, I'm really angry at people that do that kind of thing, it's bullshit. Here's I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. What Creative Live does now, or what WPPI does now, or what Rob does now, that's a reflection of, that's their deal. Mm -hmm. Now, if they choose to go one way or the other, and they deal with the consequences, I get it. I'm not here to decide that. Mm -hmm. If WPPI decides to keep Rob, and Rob shows up, whatever happens, happens. And, th and they, whatever happens, they all deserve it. Mm -hmm. But... To say that WPBI should have should not be hiring people like that, I mean, I get questioned. Should they they didn't vet him correctly? Mm -hmm. But how are they supposed to know? I mean, he can't. You can't be that stupid. Don't don't. That's ridiculous. These organizations are here to help our, our creativity. They help us all grow. Mm -hmm. And then you have these idiots bad mouthing these same organizations. And these organizations start losing money. And when they start losing money. It hurts the people they're trying to educate. Mm -hmm. It's pointless. It's 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 just these negative fifteen percent of people that are that are ruining this good thing that we have. The point of this video was to show this guy was doing something wrong. It was proven, and it's over. WPPI. If anything, more people should go to WPPI, and more more people should go to Creative Live, and more people should go to Exposed Down Under and all the other venues. And, you know. But how they handle it is going to explain how well they deal with the mess that just happened. Well, that, It's screwed up if they do the wrong thing. Yeah, and let me just add this. There is a way that that can be fixed really easily, and it's just basically a sign, uh, you know, 
declaration or a covenant of authenticity. And that's all they need to do is just when you get your speaker form, you just say, you know, I, I testify and declare that the original, uh, the material that I'm going to be present is authentic and is of my own works. And that's all you need to say. And then, you know, you hold the organization harmless for whatever damage arises as a result of your controversy. I mean, I'll take it a step further. I say put in the contract that if I'm lying, that the organization can sue you for the amount they lost because you were a liar. Well, that's also hold harmless. Yeah, that's, right, that's right. the same thing. Right. Show us how much I know about law. <laughs> but that's okay. But yeah. yeah it's a great idea. Yeah. No, absolutely. And there's no reason, there's no way for them to know. Yeah. They're trusting you and your integrity. So, I'm look, I'm getting loud now more than I have this whole interview. Okay. Because I get really mad at the stupidity of this industry. If they try to pull that, and they did it with um, other things too, and I always felt that that was wrong. How they handle the situation is one thing, but blaming them, blaming them for what was done is absurd. It's asinine, and it really upsets me. But this is between me and Rob as far as whose fault it is. You know what I mean? It's not WPPI's fault. And I felt really bad, I will say this, me and Jason know each other very well. We've known each other for years. And, you know, I feel really bad for Jason. I'm mad at Rob for making Jason feel bad. You know, that's another reason why I'm mad. And it's not fair. You know, and I knew I had to do this. I had to do this, and I knew it would hurt Jason. And I feel horrible about it. And there's no reason why that should be. The whole world should be saying, Jason, we're behind you, man. We know it's not your fault. You know, it, it just drives me up the wall. So anyway, I, they've I don't, been, they've I don't been, know what else to say. You got, I got my point across. No, yeah, and they've been doing a fantastic job of listening to, to everybody, as has Creative Live. I think that what happened before is the reason why the vetting wasn't occurring so much was because the way the social network was working was that it just made sense to feature people because they had a huge number of followers and likes and things like that. But the other part of it is when you think about the quality instruction, it's like, well, maybe let's find out. If, I mean, if it were me, I would say, who's got the real world experience? Who's always flying around on planes doing real jobs? Can we ask that person for a couple hours of their time to help educate people who aren't as far along? Let's get real industry leaders, not just the one who jump up because of the number of the fans on Facebook page or whatever. And that's where, you know, that's where I'm coming from. But I think that what this has taught us is that we do need to have the instructors declare on a contract that their material is original. So when you know when you say people should know better, but they kind of have morals and ethics and it's kind of different, it's because it's not in front of their yeah. face yet. You know what I mean? Like with Rob or Jasmine or Doug, it's like all these things, you know, it's not in front of my face. But then all of a sudden, you do a search now for Rob Adams, guess what you're going to find? You're going to find this controversy on the Google search because everyone's looking for that. Or Jack, well, I mean, I'll, you know. say this too. I'll say this too. I think Rob's going to feel, in the educational world, I think he's going to feel some pain for about a year because of, you know, obviously what happened in the Google stuff. I think he can get rid of that. People are going to stop going to whatever, photostealing.com, whatever the exact website is. They're going to stop going there eventually. I mean, it's gonna next week something else is gonna pop up and everyone's gonna forget. But you know, if you're smart, and you know about SEO, you can figure out ways to get your name back out of that thing, and you can redeem yourself. Sure. Look, I will forgive him one day. I think everyone deserves, and this is another thing I hope you put in here. Okay. I I I will forgive him one day. I think everybody deserves a second chance. I think um, I think we we're, nobody's perfect. I make mistakes just like everybody else. I'm not perfect. And I think that um, he's a talented guy. He, I'm surprised he did what he did. He just, I don't think he needed to. Mm -hmm. He's a talented guy. And I'm sure if he plays his cards right and he stays true and he keeps a strong moral compass, I think in a year or two, he can be great again. He can be in a really good place again. Mm -hmm. And as far as his wedding thing goes, um, I never wanted to harm his wedding business at all. I kind of thought it would trickle in if it got really bad. And I think he's probably feeling it now because of the Google ranking thing. But again, it's an SEO thing. 
you know, two weeks from now, nobody's going to be looking at that video or a couple of people are going to be sprinkling in on it. He can start to fix his SEO on that. His brides won't know anymore. And, um, you know, it really has nothing. It, it's a shame because it really has nothing to do with the work he delivers to his brides is the work he delivers to his brides. And, it, it, you know, it is what it is. If the bride expects something, he delivers it, and it's a great film, all the power. Everybody's happy, win-win. The one thing I will say, too, is when I give a workshop, I expect certain people to copy me exactly and, and be lazy and do it. And, of course, I'm not happy about it, but I expect it. In, in, it. in making the product no, or in teaching? There's but I don't want it. You're right. right. I don't want them to copy it and then teach it. No, 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 no. no. Right, Kid. right. Yeah. And, and if anybody disagrees with me, I, I'll just, that's, I, I don't know what to say. I'm going to say some bad words. That's wrong. When you start to say that, I'm sorry, but you have no moral compass. Mm -hmm. When you say that, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. And I will defend that to the end. And that's the problem. People trying to figure out ways to come up with, listen, you can learn and you can copy, but you can't learn, copy, and teach exactly the same thing. Right. No, 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 no. Right. That's what happened. This is what happened for you to do that. Learn yeah. your lesson. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Anyway, I, you know, I don't know, I, I just, I, I, I hope we all move on from this. And I think we will. I think um, basically what has happened is this. It's localized and it's an incident, but what it's done is it's been a call for reform. And it's been a number of them recently, and I think there's been so many good things. Number one, there is a deterrent now because of watching other people go through the fryer. Uh, so if you're going to think about those things, maybe you'll think twice, maybe not. And if you don't, we know that there's an army of people that are going to defend the industry. Um, but number two, there, you know, there have been uh, organizations that have stepped up and removed speakers, which is also nice. And, um, you know, as they should, as they should, because it's bad for the organization to have something like this on there. And I think here in this situation, what I really like about it is that we've taught people, uh, especially with the ability, this is the first time that we've actually had the opportunity. I didn't have uh, Doug Gordon able to come on and, and say, you know, what he felt or whatever, maybe he will. But this is the first time we've ha actually had the opportunity to listen directly from someone who's been violated and to hear your graciousness and say, look, I don't want to destroy the guy, I just want to set things right. And I think that's that's completely uh, a, a really good thing. As long as we can start reforms, bring awareness to right versus wrong, and to basically just kind of show this is what happens to people who do things wrong, and this is what happens to people who are victims of people who do things against them, then I think we've all kind of pushed the things a little bit more toward, toward integrity. And I think, you know, for all of those things, it's a good thing. I don't, I, I think Rob's a, a talented person too, and quite honestly, I did watch a good number of his videos on Creative Live. It's, it's, I'm going to be watching yours now. But, <laughs> you know, uh, but that's, that's, that's how the internet works. I don't think, and the thing that, that I really know after talking to you is the people who say that you did this for, stardom or jealousy or whatever and uh, having talked to you and knowing that you made a choice to kind of pull back and focus on your own business for a couple of years and out of education well that's proof right there you didn't get kicked off any podium for whatever you pulled out because there's other things in life and I think that's another thing it's this rock star thing it doesn't need to be so distorted well here's a shout out to the buddies that know about me but uh Politics kind of put me in another path, so. Okay. <laughs> I, I, my close friends know exactly what that's about. <laughs> okay. But, uh, I mean, I, you know, I knew this. Uh, my, me and the guys, my team here, we've been planning and, and, and setting up new branding for 2014 um, to, to concentrate on three things. And, um, you know, obviously one is rebranding for weddings, a different approach again. I was trying to reinvent. Number two is you know commercial work, which I'm very passionate about. It had nothing to do with weddings, uh, documentaries and things like that. But the other thing too is work, workshop education. I always I want to push. I'm already I've been pushing education now for the brides themselves uh, on my website. I just started pushing that uh, about a month ago. You know, actually interviewing brides that are married now and teaching other brides what they should and shouldn't do. Oh, More importantly than that, I love teaching. Like, like I know what I love. I know what I have fun with. Mm -hmm. I'm a musician. I love to play piano. Mm -hmm. I'm a filmmaker. I love to make films. And uh, I'm a teacher. I love to teach. I love, like you said, I 
love when I explain something and their eyes light up and they're like, yes, that's, or when you get to that point and they're like, they're looking at you and they start clapping. I mean, there's nothing better than that. Right. And, and you know, of course there's an acceptance there. It's, it's like when I'm, I feel the same way. When I'm a keyboard player on stage and I finish a song and the band does a great job and everybody claps, you know, is it an ego? I don't probably, you know, but it, it feels good to like work hard and show people and they clap. I think we all, it's human nature, right? Well, the same thing with education. When, when, when I do something in education and every now and then I get that applause, you know, that, that's the best feeling in the world. And I feel like I gave something and they got it and they're gracious about it. I mean, ah, that's great. Well, education yeah. is huge. I think it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I can tell. And the thing about, you know, the applause and all that, and you say, does it feel good to me? Is that ego or whatever? Well, what you're seeing is that you made other people happy. And yes. what, what's a better feeling than that? That, But when you educate, you not only make people happy, but you empower them. And I think that's that's the huge gift. And we all really need to stay focused on those things. And that's where that's where our passion needs to be, is getting into And I've heard people say, you know, Rob's a great guy. He sat down with people for a long time. Not, not to get paid or whatever, you know, he really cares about people teaching, and obviously he has, he has all of those things, he's talented, he cares about people teaching, and hopefully this is an isolated incident, but I hope it does serve to set things right, and also to make a little bit more move toward reforms, and I think if that's the case, then, and, and when I close off, I want to say this, you did not mean for this to go viral, when I first saw it, it was on your own little thing, password protected on Vimeo, and it was just your little tiny peep to those of you who knew you uh, to know that that was out there. The viral thing with all these people now knowing who you are, uh, or or uh, uh, Rob, uh, that that was as a result of the outrage. I, I will say this. I will say this. I, I didn't. I didn't want it or expected it. I didn't want it to go viral because I didn't want it to tie too much into his brides. Sure. That made it look viral. Because that wasn't my intention. I wanted it to go viral within the filmmaking community. And that was, I wanted people to know. That's what I wanted. But I had a feeling that if we kept it, you know, there, and it stayed in that thing, it would make sense. And even, I, I was fine. I wanted photographers to know too. Because this, we're only this, look, we're different, but we're the same. I, I wanted that community to know. But I didn't want it to go. I didn't know it was going to get picked up on huge blocks. I didn't know that at all. And once that happens, I mean, that's borderline consumer, you know, professional. It gets tricky there. Um, there was one more point you said, though, and I wanted to get to. <laughs> and I'm exhausted because I've been traveling <laughs> for 14 hour days while this whole thing's been going on with my iPhone dying on me constantly. <laughs> um, and then, you know what? I, I look, I should have slow down and just let it be because I learned something recently and I think we should all learn from this. It's one of the most important bits of information I learned in life and that is taught by a good friend of mine, Ofer from Israel. He said, Adam, 90% of the problems in life will always work themselves out. Don't worry about that. And it's so true. I thought you made that up. <laughs> <laughs>
What you did, uh, especially with uh, bringing it out and then responding to the apology, I think that that also was a big deal because, you know, uh, you know my opinion on the apology. It, the written apology from Rob Adams was probably better not typed out. Um, I don't think it, it really helped out a lot. And, no, I'm just, I'm just saying for any of you who uh, wind up in a situation like that, um, when you do your apology, uh, what could be done differently? Would Try not to quote the percentage and try not to be angry at the people or uh, that are angry at you or the people that have exposed you especially. I think that that pretty much sets you back. Uh, that digs the hole quite a bit deeper. Yeah, I mean, I learned something from that. If I ever found myself in that position, I would know to say, I'm sorry, I messed up, I'm going to go hide now. I deserve all of everything I'm getting. You know, I would say something along those lines mm -hmm. and be humble about it and walk away because the minute you say, but, you got a ton of people, the people that are mad at you are just going to get more mad at you. It's yeah. like throwing another piece of gasoline on the fire. Yeah. I don't know why, but it just, it is what it is. So I, I learned the same thing from that. And the other thing too is just to let you know, Gary, is that um, that the video is public on my Vimeo, and it's not. After the end of today, it's going to be hidden on Vimeo. I'm going to embed it on one site. Um, where it belongs because it, it really it's tying into my personal to my brides that see my Vimeo site oh yeah for sure so I'm going to hide it there it's going to be only my educational stuff I mean I don't want to take it down I, I hate to be a bad person about that but it it's there's a point to it there's a point there and it will die down and it will get 10 hits one day and then that's that and it's fine but it's on going to be on my blog only of my educational thing because that's kind of where it should have been to begin with. It was an educational situation and I'm just going to embed it from there and it's, you can go to my video, it's going to be gone. You're not going to see it on my video. Mm -hmm. so, and the original, the original link will be broken? No, the original link will just be, I'm going to turn off the public view Got of it. it. Okay. And I'll just embed it on my thing. Sure. Okay. But like, like SLR lounge won't work unless it you know, uses that. Or maybe you can embed it, I don't know. Okay. okay. But, um, because I, I just, I got to, like I said, I was mad. You're mad. You just, you know, I think the apology infuriated me more, so I, that's when I clicked public. Yeah, yeah. That really, and looking back, I guess I'm, I was being immature about it. I was being mad. I don't regret it, but, you know, I think I would have done it if, now that I'm cooled off about it. But I, I, I know, this is where I need to go with it. It's going to go there. Only the educational people in that world will know and understand, and it'll go away. It will yeah. go away until somebody does something again, and then yes. it will pop up. When I talked to Doug Gordon, um, he said, you know what, I'm just finally healing, and then somebody does something again, and then my name pops up. I, I know Doug very well. We're local to each other, and he's a friend of mine. And um, He's a friend of mine, too. And no, he, I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean that to happen. So now there's three. There's the <laughs> Rob <laughs> Adams, Doug Gordon, <laughs> and <laughs> Jasmine Starr. <laughs> I got somebody else in <laughs> You're all tied together. <laughs> um, no, I mean, it's a, it is. It's a shame that that's doing that thing. Um, but you know what? Maybe this is the last one. Maybe I hope this so. was like the nail in the coffin, and it doesn't happen anymore. You know? I hope so. I hope so too. I hate to say this, but it's getting worse every single time. The ones that have come up, I mean, Jasmine's first, the tweets were pretty minor. Doug did some blog stuff that wasn't, you know, terribly bad. And then Jasmine lifted entire articles, which got worse. And then now you've got a person verbatimly copying your seminar on Creative Life. And so those are escalating. Even though these things, these witch hunts, and this KKK style burning of the cross, the crowd. I, I didn't even see this stuff. I, I, mean, I, I obviously haven't been able to read everything. I heard there was. Say this publicly. I heard there were death threats. What the hell? Yeah. Death threats? No, it's awful. Some people. Right. Did they take off? And, and I mean, the, you know, I don't know. That's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. But um. People are really mature when they start doing that stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah, but I hope it. I hope it does stop because it sure would be great. I mean, I think we've got a great convention to look forward to at WPPI. I, from what I heard from Sal, Rob is stepping down. Um, I don't know for sure, uh, but that's the last that I heard from Sal Sincata. So. Oh, Sal. Yeah, you yeah, like yeah. This. yeah. I didn't know I was partners with anybody. <laughs> Elaine is my company. <laughs> I think on your blog it says I, I, I started it with somebody else. I don't know. Oh, oh. Maybe it wasn't you, Sal. Maybe you were copying on another blog. Somebody said something. But when I read them all, it's like, I don't, one of the, I don't know, pra- paraphrasing, I don't one of the co owners of Penny Lane. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> You know, you've got... No, you, you keep it up. It, it makes things interesting. Just keep it up. <laughs> you need to read a fortune cookie. It'll say something like, people are taking away ownership uh, of everything you own. <laughs> <laughs> or your horoscope or something. There's something in the universe that's taking away everything that you've built and, and own and yeah. giving it to others. But Well, it was really great talking to you. This is... Uh, I, I've learned a lot. I'm re- really glad I had a chance to talk to you. I think it's important. Let me uh, vent a little bit. And anyway, I, 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 I did want to make a point. I didn't want this to be like one of those, I'm mad at Rob and I'm raking him through the coals more. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm moving on already. And I, I know he's, oh, look, me and Rob spoke via email personally. Um, I'm not going to say word for word what he said. That's between me and him. But I will say it, it helped me heal. And in, 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 in a nutshell, he, sin, he sincerely apologized to me. That's great. And that's what I wanted, too. I really wanted that. I wanted an apology because it, it, it's a healing process. It, it helps you. How can you be that mad at the guy? you got to bring it down a notch. So I told him I don't forgive him right now, but I'm sure I will one day. And uh, I told him the apology meant a lot. So I just want everyone to know that he did do the right thing to me uh, with that email. And um, that's what I needed for me. Yes, yeah. great to hear. You know, that's great to hear. Well, thank. That's good thing. Well, thank you so much. Okay, absolutely. Thanks for thanks for having me, Gary. You're very gracious, and I, I admire you as a teacher very much. Thank you. Likewise. <laughs> thanks. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks, okay. Bye. Bye.